Well, yeah, can't win them all. Past couple of weeks, SmackDowns, I really, really enjoyed. This week, eh, admittedly, was a bit of a challenge. Wasn't that good. You could feel that this show had Vince McMahon's fingerprints all over it. And that's what you get for not having Roman Reigns in the first hour of your show. You see what happens when you do that. Like, you open the show with the dirt sheet. And any opportunity to see Jomo, especially because it means it's an opportunity to troll Tasteless Tony T, I'm down for it. Like, that's all I need. Otis coming out with his body built by stake. Rampaging because Mandy Rose got traded to Raw and it's clear and obvious that Miz and Morrison had something to do with that. Like trying to troll at him, trying to get after money back briefcase. I'm good with this. Like later on, the whole thing about Otis getting served with papers because he's getting sued. I got two things to say about that. Number one, Tucker, we're watching you. We're watching you. You're supposed to be teammates, partners. That's like blood, family. But when Otis is clearly experiencing a time of need, you're going to tell him that he's in trouble, not you? Watch it. We're going to be on you, Tucker! Sucker! And number two, if Otis finds himself in need of legal representation, there is only one option. There is only one choice. We need him to seek out Joseph Park. He is there. Find him. It will be fantastic television. What well, was a fantastic television, though? First, Grand Metal League versus Cesaro. I honestly don't even remember this match happening. Like, I, I, I know it technically happened, but I don't remember anything about it. Like, it's like I mentally blocked it out. I saw something this morning online talking about how Vince hated the match so much that he tried it. He, he was thinking about ending it during the commercial. <laughs> Yeah, not good. Not a banner moment. And speaking of not banner moments, who the hell signed off on this? And I thought I had a punchable face. Good God Almighty. Matt Riddle is what happens when you try to rip off RVD's gimmick and you've got none of the appeal and none of the damn talent. He's a premier definition of a heel, both inside the ring and especially outside of it. Like, you look at him, what in the hell is there to like about this dude? He's grating in so many different levels, he is so fucking annoying, and he's so stupid. And I hope this thing was nothing more as an attempt to begin the burial process for him because he goddamn deserves it. Ugh, unbelievable. Uh, the moment of bliss was really bad. Nikki Cross on a mic is kind of cringe as it is. And then you bring out Lacey and Evans. What's, what's the appeal supposed to be here? Oh, you're nasty. You're nasty. You're nasty. It'd be okay if somebody, let's say, ripped ass and you said, you nasty. But she's just like, such a nasty. Such a nasty. Shut up, bitch. God. And what's really weird was they went, made sure that Alexa went to the lengths of mentioning that Nikki Cross hadn't beaten Bailey in the past year whenever she faced her, which tells you either one of two things. A, why would you watch the match? Because she can't beat her. Two, perhaps Sasha Banks is going to interfere and cost Bailey the match. I don't know. This whole thing was weird. Uh, Lacey Evans versus Nikki Cross, the match, certainly was no showcase of wrestling of any kind. I could have totally passed on this. But the reality is, is I was at this moment in time getting a little irritated because I needed Roman Reigns. That Tribal Chief video package was outstanding. Talking about the lineage of the Samoan family dynasty, starting with High Chief Peter Maivia on through the years. Talking about Roman, talking about the Usos, talking about Rikishi, talking about the wild Samoans, often Sika. Like you can go on and on down the line. Umanga, as William Regal used to say. Like this was so incredibly well done. Why couldn't we have started the show with this? Or I put it at the very beginning of the show. Like, this felt like a big league type of movie trailer. And narrated so very well and so on point by Paul Heyman. Really well constructed. Like, sometimes when WWE wants to, they could still bang out some fantastic, fantastic vignettes and video features. And this certainly was one of them. And they need to sometimes. Because when it comes down to the execution of some key moments from a structure standpoint, from a writing standpoint, 
from an execution standpoint, they miss and they miss big. And I look at this Sasha Banks response and I'm thinking to myself, this should be a highlight of this show. Like this is probably one of the things that people are really looking forward to on this show. And you can let me know in the comments what you thought about this segment and how you thought uh, it came across on TV, what you thought of Sasha Banks' performance. But my first reaction is, is if this is the type of acting you're going to see in her appearances in The Mandalorian, uh, then I'll pass, like hard pass, because this was really bad. You're supposed to be the boss, but instead you're acting like this whiny, whiny sniveling little bitch. You got a neck brace on, but you're moving your head from side to side. Like so many things about this just did not work. And when you're looking into something like this as being one of these moments where you can get real in wrestling and make it look real and feel real, this felt so fake and so hokey to the point where when Bailey came in and attacked her again, I'm actually kind of happy Bailey came because she ended the segment. Now Bailey's the freaking baby face here. Like to me, Sasha Banks should have come out and been like, you know, rather indignant and pissed off, but not in a whiny way and not in a crying way and not in a bitchy type of way. She should have said, you know what? Bailey's right. She got me before I got her. And that'll be the last time that ever happens. And I promise you, you took it a whole other step too far, but I'm the boss, bitch. Like, that type of thing. Like, if you do that, you're saying, oh, Sasha Banks is kind of the boss. She's hashtag legit. Hashtag boss. Hashtag badass. Instead of coming out of that segment, you see absolutely none of that. Bailey's the one that you enjoy more than Sasha Banks. It's just all messed up. So that was a disappointment for me. I thought it was going to be a lot better than it ultimately was. Uh, here's what I need to understand, though. Is why does Sami Zayn have to wrestle AJ Styles? AJ Styles has, has no current claims on the Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn is the actual real deal legit Intercontinental Championship. Jeff Hardy's the fraud. Sami Zayn's the one that won the belt and never lost it. Jeff Hardy yet is walking around with his own dollar store version of it. Why does Sami Zayn have to wrestle AJ Styles? Why is AJ Styles even involved in this? Who's the real Intercontinental Champion? That's the whole plug. That's the whole storyline. That's what it should all be about a class of champions. Putting three people in here is just dumb. And of course AJ Styles had to resort to some highfalutin shenanigans to beat SmackDown's number two, number one boss babyface in Sami Zayn. I smell an anti-Canadian, anti-Syrian conspiracy here in WWE. What in the name of COVID is going on? And then after the match, how dare Jeff Hardy launch this savage, vicious, blindside, unprovoked attack when it wasn't called for? I want to talk about bringing Willow back. How about we bring Jeff Hardy, Harvey back? That way, Sami Zayn can whoop both their asses at Clash of Champions and truly establish himself as the undisputed, reigning, defending, intercontinental champion of the WWE. Yeah! That's how you know 2020 is weird and bad. I'm on the Sami Zayn bandwagon all of a sudden. What is going on here? Ah, there goes my head. Another thing I did like on this show, though, aside from the Tribal Chief video package, Big E, like E, whooping ass. He's going to call you Larry and kept on whooping on Whitey. That's right, beat the mayonnaise out of that backstage security box. I love it. I absolutely love it. Like, he's right. You got to have some level of serious. You can have fun and joke around a kid around and not take yourself too seriously, but there are times you got to be serious. And this is one of them. And Big E's mad and he's not going to take it anymore. That's exactly what I want to see out of somebody who's trying to put in a position to potentially win the Royal Rumble in January. Yes! Fantastic. Which brings us to the main event, which is, of course, the highlight of the night. Because, of course, it had Roman Reigns. I mean, what else did you expect? Like, even when Roman Reigns came out, like, what a nice guy. He brings Pro Paul Heyman out, gets him a payday for appearing on the show, and saves Paul Heyman's voice. He understands things like laryngitis can be serious. So Roman's like, take some time off. You already did that great video package earlier. We don't need to hear you speak a second time. Let's keep it fresh. And let's keep your vocal cords fresh. 
And I'm going to say something short, sweet, and to the point. Bam, boom, and feel like a big deal. And that's exactly what Roman Reigns did. Fantastic. And I appreciate how in this match, last week, for example, in the main event, you know, he sat there and he got delayed. Wasn't his fault. But he came out just in time to tag in to give his cousin, his fam, Jay a rest. So that way, Roman could ensure that his team achieved the pinfall victory. And this week, he was there from the beginning, following the rules of the match. It was a small street fight, so I don't want to hear it. Following the rules of the match. This time, Roman hit the spear, which then allowed Jay to hit the splash and allowed Jay to get the pinfall victory for his team. So here is Roman sharing the glory, the anti-Cena, the anti-Hogan, the anti-Austin. He's distributing the wealth. He is sharing the spotlight and glory with others. That's a hero to me. And then look at what happened afterwards. The warm, long embrace after a hard-fought victory. Like, you could feel the emotion there. Like, these dudes go way back. It was real, heterosexual, family man love there. Like, you could feel it. That's, that's, that's a bro hug. And Roman smile, like, fantastic. And even when Jay was getting out of pocket a little bit and starting to get his eyes a little bit bigger than his balls, sitting there breaking superstition and tradition, don't touch the title when you haven't won the title. Doesn't work in the Stanley Cup very well. Doesn't work in other sports. You should not be doing it here. Roman, you know, he could have whooped his ass right there and would have been entitled to do so because it's his locker room. It's his island. And he has to enforce the superstitions and discipline of his island. But he didn't do that. He said everybody makes mistakes. Jay just got caught up in the emotion of the moment. He, he could have done more, but he didn't. And he let things play out. Because that's what good guys do. And some of you are going to point, and I know it's coming. Well, what happened when Roman was sitting there and giving this scowling face as Jay was blocking up the ramp? Well, tell Jay to stop letting those Samoans sidewind their farts off right before he gets out of the ring. What the hell was Roman supposed to do? Is he going to sit there and smile? Show off his new veneers? <laughs> And let that freaking Samoa ass taint get up into his nostrils? No, Jay trolled him. It was a hail maneuver. Of course Roman's going to look upset. And when he looks to Paul Heyman and kind of gives him the look, he's like, all right, I got something for him. There's going to be a receipt. Could be next week. Could be Clash of Champions. I'm not telling you. Roman Reigns, top babyface in all of professional wrestling. There are two opinions you can have on that. The right one and then thinking like a fool that he's not. Roman Reigns is fantastic. The main event was enjoyable. Loving the dynamics of this. Other than that, not a lot of great on this show. Past couple of weeks were much better than this week. You, you could tell that this felt like it had Vince's randomness and last minute changes all over it. It really did. Um, just kind of weirdly mapped out. Not good. Let's hope next week, is, with it being the go-home show for Clash of Champions, it's a little bit better than this offering because this was not up to the standards of the past couple of weeks.